Hello, Full Gospel Center and those who are visiting on YouTube. I am Julius White, and I welcome you joining us as we want to encourage one another as we are in this time that's very different for most of us. You know, this whole format is completely different. Matter of fact, this is the first time I'm being recorded, so I've never even worked with this format before. Normally when I speak, I'm speaking to somebody in the audience. I can look in one's eyes. I can see the way people are moving around in their seats or whatever, and I can get feedback. Right now, I'm looking at a camera, and it's just looking back, and it's not giving me any feedback. So, some people don't handle change well. There are some of us that have lost our peace. Um, some have lost family members and friends. Some have lost our jobs and our income. Um, the things that we consider that we count as our stability. But the one thing to recognize is that God is in this no matter where you are. In Psalm 139, David said, starting with verse 7, he says, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will lay hold of me. If I say, surely the darkness will overwhelm me and the light around me will be night, even the darkness is not dark to you and the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are alike to you. You see, 2020 is different. None of us, or very few of us, are in places where we expected to be. But you know what? That psalm should give us comfort to know that no matter where we are, whether our jobs changed, whether the page of the calendar has changed, whether our circumstances have changed, God is there. As David said, there's nowhere that he could go that's away from the Spirit of God or outside of God's presence. So know that. Know that wherever you are, whatever's going on in your life, whatever circumstances surround you, whatever things have changed, God is there too. And if we look at things and we get a perspective to understand God is our provider. Our job is simply the tool that he uses. The grocery store is a tool that God uses. You know, some of us have looked at things of shortages and things like that. And we're like, oh my goodness, you know, we can't get such and such. But that just means you need a different place to get it. God is your provider. When you look for things, just ask God. Let him know. And again, as we say in the Lord's Prayer, it was give us this day our daily bread. Seek the Lord and depend on him. And know that all these things are in him. There's nothing, nowhere, nothing outside the presence of God. So know that and be comfortable because you know, we are formed by God, and he knows us. You know, David goes on in the chapter, um, starting with verse 13, says, For you have formed my inward parts. You have wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. And my soul knows it very well. And my frame was not hidden to you when I was made in secret 
and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance. So, know that you are precious to God. You know, the location of the earth, as far as its location to the sun, the atmosphere, all these things, the earth was created by God for man. You know, if we were a moment closer to the sun, we couldn't exist. We were a moment further away from the sun. We couldn't exist. If the oxygen level in the air was different than what it was, we wouldn't exist. But God made this for man. But he made your circumstances for you. The things that you're in, the things that you're going through, they're to build character. And God is there. And just know, further on it says, In your book were all my days written that were ordained for me when I was not yet in one of them. So you see, our days were decided before we were born. You know, these things that we look, you know, whether it's the COVID-19, heart disease, cancer, accidents, whatever. These things do not determine when you die. They're simply the means by which death comes. Your days were numbered before you were born. Before you were born, those days were numbered. So be encouraged. There's no reason to be in fear because God is everywhere. Okay, and there's nothing that you can do, no circumstance that will ever change to put you outside the will of God because that just cannot happen. And it says, How precious are your thoughts to me, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I should count them, they would outnumber the sand. When I am awake, I am with you. You see, God loves us. There's nothing that will ever change that. He's there for us. He's with us. And you know, one of the things is when we recognize that, we have to begin to understand that there also is an enemy. But you know, the enemy can't touch us. And we need to have a, the right perspective on the enemy also. And David goes on to saying, Oh, that I would slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, men of bloodshed. For they speak against you wickedly, and your enemies take your name in vain. Verse 21 says, Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with the uttermost hatred, for they have become mine enemies. Understand that those who are against God are also against you. You know, there's no point in being friends with the world, because the world is not there for you. So when our perspective is on God, we can see and we can be comfortable knowing that God is on our side. So don't look to those who have put themselves up against God as your source or as your protection or anything that's even there for you. You know, your substance is from God, your resources are from God, and his thoughts are towards you. Know that. And he even goes on to say, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts, and see if there are any hurtful ways in me, and lead me in the everlasting way. You see, David asked God to search his heart, as should all of us. 
because he knows the things that cause us to be anxious and the things that, you know, might get us excited or whatever. But here's something I say often. It says, God doesn't sleep, therefore I can. And you see, you also, you can sleep every night. Unless, of course, you have a nighttime job, which, you know, you can sleep peacefully at other times, knowing that God is awake and that all of these circumstances are under his authority. And the last thing that David says in this chapter is, and lead me in an everlasting way. The one thing to recognize here is that life goes beyond the grave. There's an eternity to think about. So the things that everything that we see, everything that we can touch, anything that we taste, all of these things are going to pass away. Yet we're going to pass into eternity. So when you look at things with an eternal perspective, there's really nothing that can change that. These things pass away. You know, a few years back... Um, one of my customers said to me, how is it that you can be peaceful all the time? And I said to them, I said, well, you know, there's good days and there's bad days. I said, there's things that can happen. You know, there's days that go way beyond what I planned and things happen that have made things horrible. I says, but you know what? At the end of the day, I'm still going to heaven and there's nothing that's going to change that. So when we look at things with an eternal perspective, yes, there might be things that are very different than what we thought. And things might go what we would consider bad. But when you look at that in the eternal perspective, nothing will change your salvation. If you know Christ, you will see eternity. And there's nothing that can happen today, tomorrow, or any other day that's going to change your eternity. So in that, know that there's peace. And there's one other thing I do want to talk about too, though. One of the things that the virus has actually shown us and the spread of the virus. You know, the virus is contagious. You know, people catch it. They say statistically for every one person that has it, two or three other people will get it. You know, most viruses will spread one-on-one -on -one or 1 1.5 to 1. But you know what? Here's the thing. Christianity should spread the same way. If you believe in God, you should be contagious. Your life should cause others to catch what you have. You should live in such a manner that what you have can be contagious to others so that they will begin to seek God and know God and know the peace that you have. So as we depart, I want to thank everybody for joining us. It's been a great time, and I hope that you all will stay encouraged and stay focused on eternity, because no matter what page of the calendar you're on, no matter what's going on, God is with you. Yeah.